Well, I think these three verses of these parables, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the, the prodigal son, are, are really three of the most precious ones to me, and always have been. Jesus takes the three stories because everyone can relate to them. I mean, seriously. Who has not frantically spent hours looking for your keys? Especially if you have a purse. I don't know if you're like mine, but they can be in the purse and you can be digging for them for 5, 10, 15 minutes knowing that they're there, but you can't find them. Or who here in the church has ever had to use someone else's phone to call your phone because you couldn't find it? <laughs> the worst is when it's like not on <laughs> or the battery is dead and you can't find it. Yeah, or how about a debit or a credit card? You know, the one that you took out of your wallet because you were just going to run in there for something or you wanted to buy gas and then you slipped it in your pocket and then when you need it again, you looked in your pocket or your jacket or you started thinking, of what coat did I have on? Yeah. Or how about a bill? You know, the one that needs to be paid tomorrow and you go in the exact spot that you thought you left it and it's not there and so you frantically spend the next how long trying to find it so you can pay it. Yeah, or how about, uh, this one's for the guys. The one that makes a grown man come to tears. Lose his mind. You know what I'm talking about. You've lost the remote control to the TV. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I've got to tell this. I, there was a story, and this is just too funny. There was a lady that was at the grocery counter, and she was paying for her food, and, and she was digging through her purse for a checkbook. She pulled out the remote control to the TV. <laughs> the cashier looked at her, and he said, You carry the remote with you? She said, That's the only way I can get back in. <laughs> How about money? You ever had like a handful of $20 bills or maybe even a 50 or a 100 and you were maybe going to put them in the safe or you're going to do something special with it and, and you get sidetracked and you see something and you go, okay, I'm going to put it right here where nothing will happen to it and I'll be right back and grab it. And then you go back and you go, where did I put that? And you spend how much time <coughs> frantically looking for it? Yeah. Okay, one more. How about kids? Have you ever lost kids? If you're sitting there going, never, it's because you've never had kids. <laughs> or else they're small enough, they're still in a car seat or in a stroller. Trust me, your day will come. You know, I was, I was one of those parents that I always pride myself that, you know, I was in the upper echelon of parenting because I'd never lost a kid. You know, Shintel was seven, Ashley was two, Brooke was a baby. I thought I had this parenting thing figured out pretty good. So one day we were at the department store at the mall, I don't know, it was probably pennies or something. You know how they have all those racks and the pants go all the way to the floor? And we were, we were making a bad dash through and something just caught my eye and I just stopped for a brief moment. I had a ribbon stroller, she was beside me, Ash was on the other side. And I just looked at it and I turned around and I said, okay, let's go to such and such. And I noticed I only had two kids. <laughs> Couldn't find Ashley anymore. Well, I wasn't going to panic. I mean, it just then, but a split second. So I started looking, and I started calling out a name, and nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. So Chantel started in the search, and we started making a <laughs> search, looking and calling out a little louder. Well, I'll be darned, I wasn't about to ask for help, because then that would prove that I wasn't in that upper echelon anymore, you know? So <laughs> about the time I was starting to panic, my blood pressure was starting to rise, because I couldn't find her anywhere. And of course, you know your mind goes to all the places you don't want it to go to. But just about the time I was about ready to eat my pride and ask for help, I heard a little faint giggle. Well, my two-year-old had decided the temptation was way too much and that she could not possibly stay by the stroller but needed to play hide and seek amongst all of the wonderful long pants that were hanging on the ground. Well, she was a smart two-year-old because she didn't just hide in one spot, she kept moving. <laughs>
something that is so valuable that we can't find it again, something that can't be replaced, like a wedding ring, or maybe a family heirloom. Uh, dear friends of ours who are our next-door neighbors when we lived in town in Syracuse, and we were over at a ball game uh, for American Legion baseball game, and she lost her wedding ring. And the entire town, I think, was out there scouring them with metal detectors and everything, trying to find the wedding ring. And we never did. You know, Jesus knew that these things happened. You know, what, what about an older child who chooses to run away or wants to blend in to the crowded world? One who knows that he thinks he knows what is best. And he wants to become invisible. Jesus knew that these stories would transcend all time and all culture because we can all relate to them. That's why he starts off with the example of the shepherd who, despite his careful shepherding skills, somehow manages to lose one of his sheep. Now, for the sake of the story, we need to look at all the aspects. Jesus is starting out as actually a business transaction. This was a job, and sheep were assets. And trust me, you did not want to lose one. Well, first of all, you know how that sheep could have been a female, and it could have been pregnant, and you could have lost two sheep. Maybe that sheep was one of your best breeding ewes or rams, and you couldn't even imagine the thought of losing that. Or maybe that sheep just happened to be the runt of the litter that had just raptured your heart and had that little special place, and now you couldn't find it. What would you do? Well, you have several options. One, you could go hire somebody to go find that sheep while you stayed and babysat the other 99. But let me ask you, what one person here, if you had lost something dear, would be content to stay back with the 99 that weren't lost and send someone else out to find us. No. We'd be going nuts. We wouldn't want to be the one. Are they looking in the right place? Have they looked over here? Have they looked over there? What's taking them so long? How come they're not back yet? How many here, by show of hands, have ever seen the movies Home Alone, one and two? And three? How about Cheaper by the Dozen? Remember they needed them? Did you realize that all of those stories are these parables? Do you remember how frantic that mother was? She would go to all lakes across the entire world in <laughs> the second one to find her lost son. No, you'd probably hire somebody to babysit the 99 so you could be the one out calling and looking for them. And why? Because Jesus even says in John chapter 4, verse, sorry, John chapter 10, verse 4, when the shepherd has brought in all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because why? They know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Think about that child of yours. If that child was lost, would they go running into the arms of a stranger? No. But they come running into the arms, wouldn't they? Because they know your voice. They would hear it from far off. Jesus is pointing out that you would go to any and all things to find the one that's lost. And it just doesn't have to be kids. <laughs> uh, you know, I remember one of my favorite dogs. For those of you who don't know, I raised Shelties. And I had one, Tappy, and she was just like the dog I used to have when I was younger. And she had an accident when she was younger, and we saved her from that, brought her back, and she was just so precious to me. And I came home one day from town, and there was no dog waiting for me. And there was some blood on the driveway. Well, you can about imagine where my mind and my heart went. And I started calling to her, and I was looking all over, and I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find any reason for the blood. I couldn't find any reason why my dog wasn't there. And so I got in my van, and I ran up and down the roads, hollering and calling and searching, stopping at every neighbor's house, asking them if they had seen her, and to look out for her, to call me if they got any news. And I remember praying the whole way, but when I got home, I was crying and praying to the only person that I knew, knew where she was, and what had happened. 
And that night when I went to bed, I had a dream. I had a dream that I had found her. And, and God let me know that she was okay. She was scared and she was, she was lost. I thought I would find her. And in the morning, I, I got up and I rushed down stairs and I opened up the back door. And as I got to the end of the driveway, I started calling her name. And she came bounding out of the adjacent cornfield and just leapt right into my chest which was a pretty big feat for this little bitty dog. Scared out of her wits. Well, we found out what had happened. The neighbor's dogs were big. They had gotten loose, and they had come down to our place, and they got into it with her. Scared the little daylights out of her. And she had run into the cornfield, and they got lost. They couldn't find her way home. I thought about that. Here was my puppy, scared and alone, she spent the whole night trying to find her way back into my loving arms. Wow. Do you see the connection there? <laughs> Jesus said that God is that shepherd, and we are the lost sheep. And at some point in time, and maybe more times than you care to admit, you have been that sheep who has gotten sidetracked, lured away from the flock, maybe found something tantalizing or exciting just around the bend, and I'll be right back. Found 
once and for all. We thank you that you remind us that we are all lost. And it is because of your son's sacrifice that bridged that gap between our sinful self and your throne. That we can be found again. Dear Lord, remind us of that. Remind us that no matter how far astray we go, that you are in pursuit of us. That you want us. That you're just waiting for us to come to our senses. And come bounding back into your loving arms once again.